So just a couple things before we actually begin. First of all is that um, this meeting is a bit different in the sense that I moved it to Friday, and that's because I won't be here on Sunday. Otherwise, it's better to keep things consistent. But for a long time, actually, I've, just, I've, I've wanted to, for some reason or another, it's just been in me that I wanted to move this to Friday in the, in the summers because, uh, because of the switch of the hour. I just feel like it's better to keep it after Maghrib than it is to keep it after Asaf. And it's a problem for people on Sunday is to keep it after Maghrib because of the fact that people have, including myself, have kids and it's difficult for us to get everything organized when we get back home, we get back late, and then the kids go to bed late and it just starts everything off in a bad cycle. So if you have a preference either way, you can let me know. But my preference a little bit is to move it to, move it to Fridays after Maghrib. But um, we can discuss that later. But that's uh, the reason why I'm doing it this week is not because I mean I've been saying this and then everybody tells me well we can't make it we can't make it but I don't know I just feel like it's better if it's on Friday for some reason. That's just my personal preference. So I thought we'd try it this week. It just worked out because number one, the, you guys can move closer. I'm not gonna. Number one, the, I, I, there's an open house here on Sunday. So as far as the open house is concerned, we couldn't use the masjid anyway. And number two, I'm not going to be here because I'm going to be gone. For, for a week starting tomorrow. So it worked out that we tried it on, on Friday and we'll see how it goes. I, I am leaning towards moving it to Friday, but we'll see. So that was the first thing. The second thing is that, um, you know, everything in our lives is actually just, it's all pieces of memories. We don't remember the details, but we remember the big things. Like, okay, maybe three years ago, you remember Atikaf three years ago, or la- actually last year you had Moana Kamal, so you remember last year's Atikaf. Then there's this huge gap, right? And then you remember something else, and then there's this huge gap, and then you remember something else. That's the way our memories are built. Even in our recollection of the life of the Prophet, I mean, we don't necessarily know what happened day to day, but we have these big events, right? This happened, then this happened, then this happened. And so it's built into our minds in this way, in this sequence. And that's how life is. You remember first grade, then you remember something from third grade, then you remember something from sixth grade, and then it just becomes all vague in between. So sometimes opportunities arise that can create these pillars in your life that allow you to have something to hang on to. And one of those opportunities is coming up really soon, namely the fact that we have the annual gathering um, with Sheikh Zulfikar in June. Now, we might just think, well, it's just another visit. But actually, I can tell you that there is a really special kind of baraka that comes down um, in that annual gathering. And it's really strange. I've had the opportunity of, of, um, of attending the world gathering. I attended the very first one, the very second one, and the very third one. And they were really, really just incredible. And then I've also had the opportunity of attending the one that occurs in the States that uh, happened to occur in New York. And many of you actually... When I first came back, we used to make those road trips, right? 12, 13 of us, 15 of us, one time 20 of us. And, and we hang on to those. I mean, people remember. I remember that trip. I mean, I remember where his hop is when we're sitting here, right? Somewhere there. I remember we drove in the car that time. We talked the whole way there. He had so many questions. He just kept asking question after question after question. We talked the whole way there and then on the whole way back. So, I mean, you know, these things are the things. I mean, and I don't remember many other things like that year probably. But that is impressed in my mind for some reason. So these are one opportunities where you get to imprint a memory in your mind and you hang on to those memories. And two, it's a real big uh, baraka. It is a huge baraka. You know, maybe not for us because, well, in one sense it is for us because we do get an opportunity to change and revive ourselves. But it's really a big deal for that person that walks in the door that wasn't expecting the change. But because of the gathering, that person changes. And I mean, all of us have come into this way at their own pace. I mean, some of you are newer, some of you are older, but everybody has that thing that they hooked on to, right? I mean, maybe it was one particular trip where you went to New York, or maybe when it was a trip when Sheikh Zulfikar came here, or maybe it was the Artikaf that was held last year when Sheikh Kamal ran the Artikaf. I mean, there's something, right? There's something that you have that brought you into the door. Now, the reason why that gathering is so powerful is actually twofold. One is because Sheikh Zulfikar comes, the Khulafa come, the ulama from around the country come to the gathering. So they each independently bring in their own magnet, meaning the magnet that attracts the barakah from Allah. 
So independently, each of them bring in their magnet. But there's a second aspect, which you have yet to experience, but actually, because you've always gone as guests. But actually, the second thing, which is actually equally important, is the sacrifice that the organizers put into creating that environment. That's actually has its own taste, it has its own flavor, and it has its own benefit. And so, this is that opportunity that we have. I don't know if we'll have that opportunity again in our lives, but this time we have that opportunity in July, in June. So, and I and I can tell you from my own experience that the people who organize they go through a lot, and it's really a difficult thing on them when they organize the the program. But the benefit that they get is long, long lasting. And in fact, one of the habits I've seen from Sheikh Zulfiqar, and not only Sheikh Zulfiqar, but even anybody who organizes these types of gatherings, is that when the gathering is done, they tend to grab the organizers and then make a special du'a for them. And, and in that du'a, they always say that, I mean, I've seen this over several of these types of events, whether I was stu- where I was studying, or even when the Tabliqa Jamaat has their gathering, or when Walam Abdul Salim has his dinners. I mean, they're all, it's all basically the same thing. They basically explained to the people that, look, you perhaps didn't get to sit in on all the sessions. You perhaps didn't get to, quote unquote, outwardly benefit the way that you see all the people benefiting. But in the end, everything that those people took was because of the organizers. I mean, you can't have the majority of the people benefit unless there's a small group of people that sacrifice and run the whole show. It works like that in this or in this event, and it works like that in the Dean. I mean, really, it's the Sahaba and the Prophet and them, they were the organizers of the deen, right? They established this play called Islam, right? This, this stage called Islam. And then we walked, just walked in. We walked in the door and we're just kind of just taking the benefit. Well, what did we do to organize the stage? They, they spent their lives, they spent their blood, they spent their time organizing the stage. And they're getting all the reward for what we do, albeit little. Whatever we do, they're getting the reward for it. So, there's always people who set the stage, and then there's always people that come to the show. Now, you have to be in, in both circumstances in order to experience the taste that's associated with each. So we've had the opportunity on several occasions to come to the show. Now we have the opportunity to set the stage. And so that is really the challenge that's going to come upon each of us over the next few weeks. So it's coming up in June, June 10th, June 11th, and June 12th. And it really, really behooves us that we um, put in everything we can to make the event as good as we can. Because it's that sincerity, that struggle, that sacrifice that will allow other people to benefit and will allow us a very unique opportunity to benefit as people who set the stage. And it has its own taste, like I've explained. So you're going to see over the next few weeks that I'm going to be sending out emails asking people to help, asking people to take on independent responsibilities. And I'll tell you, I, I have, I mean, I'm not the, you know, you guys know me. I mean, I don't come to you and tell you to do things, right? But in this case, I'm going to have to come and ask each of you for help because it's just, it's that type of event. It's that type of endeavor. Nobody can carry it on their shoulders by themselves. So although it's not my nature to come and say, can you please do this? I mean, actually, in this situation, I'm forced to because I feel like to have the gathering in Chicago is is one of the greatest blessings that we'll probably see, you know, in, in these upcoming years, because it just it just brings in so much baraka. And the only way when I offer it and I ask Sheikh Zulfiqar, you know, can we have the gathering? We're offering Chicago. I mean, in the back of my mind, I knew that I'll probably have to break my usul. It's not an usul. It's just a personal preference that I don't like to ask people to do things. But in this particular case, I'm going to have to break that, and I'm going to actually approach you guys individually. So if you can't do it, it's best that you honestly say you can't. But if you can squeeze in, despite its difficulty, despite the difficulties of the situation, if you can squeeze in and actually help out, it would really be a benefit. And just, and just think, about, um, the, think about the fact that although you may lose out on some of the outward benefit of the gathering, in the end, it's the other people that will benefit, and that will come into your account. And you'll see. It happens every year. There will be people who change their lives at this gathering. Because, I, I mean, I can tell you from past experience that it, that's the case. And so that's the opportunity that comes up for us in, in order that we set the stage for that. And it's really important that we put in the time, it's the sincerity of the time, the effort, etc. So that was actually the second kind of pre-announcement that, that I wanted to make. 
And um, actually, um, Kashif is organizing the uh, the list of things that we need to do, and it's it's somewhat of a of a bit of a complicated document in the sense that um, we've tried to cover every single aspect of the of the gathering. Uh, so it really, if you can um, volunteer to do everything that you can do, it, even if it's something comes up that you don't volunteer. Now I know it's really painful when there like the main talk is on, and I say look, can you go to the airport, or can you go pick up this person, or can you go drop off that person? Because here you are, like, waiting for the main talk, and then all of a sudden you have to go do this. But in the end, that's the only reason why the main talk is occurring is because we agreed to make that sacrifice. And um, and when people agree to make a sacrifice, Allah blesses them tremendously. The best example is the people of Medina, right? When they invited the Pope Slice in them, they took on a responsibility. And they took on a responsibility of setting the stage for the Prophet ﷺ to be able to do what he needed to do. And that resulted in the Prophet ﷺ making Medina his home. That, that was the end result. In fact, on one of the very last battles, when the Prophet ﷺ was, when the people of the Quraysh started coming in to the, to the deen, the Prophet ﷺ distributed heavily towards the Quraysh, meaning they won the battle, they gained all this bounty, they had all this wealth, and then the Prophet ﷺ gave more to the Quraysh than he gave to the Ansar. So they started talking among themselves. You know, I mean, human beings, it's just a natural feeling that we have. They started saying to one another, well, if the Prophet ﷺ is giving them more, then he's, prob- he's favoring them, and he, he probably has more hope in them than he has in us. So anyway, some of these words eventually came to the Prophet ﷺ, and he was really hurt by those words. And he then actually called a special meeting of the Ansar. And separately, in this particular instance, as they were returning home, he called a separate meeting in the, with the Ansar, and he said to them that, you know, I've heard you guys say this. And then they felt really ashamed. Actually, just that much of his statement, if you read that hadith, it's in the book of Imam Bukhari. When he said that much, you know, I've heard these words, they were really, really, they, they just put their head down in, in, in shame. And then the Prophet them said that, you know, that, I, that if the world were in one direction and you were in another direction, I would go in the direction of the Ansar. And they were very, uh, I mean, it was, it even put them in further shame, but he then subsequently chose Medina to be his home. He's buried there. We, it's become the second holiest city, obviously, on the, on the earth. A piece of Jannah is sitting in that city. It's all because of the Prophet and them going there. But actually, in the end, it boils down to the fact that the Ansar, they set the stage for that. Now, obviously, we're not setting the stage for Medina, but for some individual person, that could be their Medina. You know, if somebody can, if we can save one person who, to change their life from acts which lead them to the hellfire to acts which will lead them to Jannah, then in the sense that their Medina was made, right? So really um, take this event seriously. And I'm actually saying this because I'm trying to remind myself, not you, because I'm so caught up in my own work that I've even been putting it to the side. And now the pressure is starting to actually come upon my shoulder as well. So it really... Um, behooves us that we try to take take this very, very seriously and try to do everything that we can. The same with the sisters. There will be a sisters separate sister session, and that sister session will be here. So the plan actually is, is that in uh, Mecca Masjid will be the brothers program, and the sisters program will be separately held over here. Now, as the far as the brothers program is concerned, there will be, there will be a 24-hour program. We'll start on Friday night, and we'll go all the way till Saturday night. Friday night will be a talk by Sheikh Zulfiqar. Then during the day on Saturday, there'll be other talks. There'll be a prayer at night. We'll sleep in the masjid for those who want to. It's open. They'll be open 24 hours, and it will be like a 24-hour program. And then there'll be a final talk on Saturday night. At the same time, the sisters will have a program. That will not be an overnight program, but they'll have a. They'll be the talk, main talk on Friday night will be um, telecast, not telecast, but broadcast into this masjid as well, and the sisters will hear over here. And then on Saturday, they'll have a sisters program. There are sisters who are scholars who are coming to this program. So they will give talks, and then um, there will be the final talk, which will be broadcast here from Makki Masjid as well, so that people will be able to benefit from the program that occurs there. So you can see, just by the fact that we separated it into two masjids, I mean, obviously it's better in the sense that it, it will, given the crowds, it'll be, it'll be just a much cleaner setup. But at the same time, it, it's going to demand a lot of back and forth. I mean, there's a good probably mile to two-mile distance between those two masjids. 
obviously what food needs to be served there will then need to be served here. It's just it's going to make things a bit more complicated, but it'll inshallah benefit people more in the long run. So those are the two things that I wanted to say as a preliminary. And then I just wanted to talk about one aspect of the soul very quickly, and then we'll we'll, we'll go on to the dhikr.